Hi there. This project is to set up this resonator guitar to use the same Klingon acoustic pickup that I'm already using in my Hummingbird and Weisenborn guitars. This is obviously a very different kind of guitar, so the setup is going to be completely different. But before we get to that, let me show you what's inside the box. Inside the box, you get a pickup, which is this quarter size item here that just sits on the surface of the instrument, kind of like that, but wherever you decide to want to put it. And it's held in place by a magnet. And this little dime size magnet is what it takes to do that. And it's held in place inside the instrument by some blue putty. And the blue putty just sticks to the back of the, of the magnet. You stick it to the inside of the guitar and it holds it in place and it really does hold it in place very well. Also inside the box is a cord, which on one end has a plug that plugs into the, uh, the pickup. And then the other end has a jack in it that your guitar cord goes into. They also make a cord that's just a 10 feet long cord that has a plug on the end that you plug straight into your amplifier so you don't have to actually use this one if you don't want to. The other thing I got to go with this because I want to try several different locations. Uh, yeah, I don't know whether it's going to sound best on the cover plate, uh, here on the body, here on the body, or here on the body. And we'll get into that in a minute. But I also bought some extra magnets to try to several locations so I don't have to take the whole thing apart after I put it back together again, at least not right away. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to go through the process of taking the guitar apart and then we'll try it all out and see how it sounds. Getting ready to take the guitar apart now. I've already loosened the strings so that they can come, come out of the tailpiece without any difficulty. I've also loosened the tailpiece using the screwdriver just a little bit, just enough to get it so the uh, cover plate will come off reasonably well. And I've also taken off all of the screws that come out of here using this very small, I guess it's a jeweler's screwdriver, but it's got the little thing on the end here so that you can just very easily unscrew them. And it does take a small screwdriver to do that because those are very small screws. So the process now is I have the strings loose, I've got the cover plate loose, and I have to carefully just lift it off so that I don't damage the bridge under here, and I'll just set that off to the side there for now. So, as you see, the, the bridge is just, just sitting here with the cone. I can just lift the whole thing out, just like that. And I'll set it off to the side, so it's not in the way. And so now, here we are with the, uh, with the open dobro, and that really is all there is to taking it apart. Loosen the tailpiece, loosen the screws, loosen the strings. You don't have to take them off the head. It'll work just fine, just like this. Um, the first thing to do is you take the magnet and you take a little bit of this blue putty. And I do mean a little bit. They say the size of a piece of rice. I don't know what size rice they're using, but I use one about, it's maybe an eighth of an inch in diameter, maybe not even quite that much. And very carefully, sort of put it in the middle and then just squish it out toward the edges so that it covers it as flat and as evenly as you can get it. Just like this. I think that's probably gonna be enough. So as you can see, it's, it's not perfectly smooth around the edges, but it covers the whole surface pretty well and it's pretty much even consistency or even thickness. I'm going to do this one easy first because it's right here. And I just put that on the end of my finger, slip that puppy under there and press it against the underside. And just for, yeah, see that'll hold just fine. That's. The, the cover plate will fit comfortably there, and I got plenty of room. I'm going to put one under here. So to do that, I'm going to take that those out of my extras. And pulling these apart is a bit of a challenge because they are really tight. There we go. I'll take another one. and put it here. 
think what I'm going to do is cut the video now and then I'll come back and once I've got all my magnets set up, I will uh, show you how I'm placing them. Don't go away. Okay, I've got all my magnets set up with their putty. And let me warn you that if you're dealing with multiple magnets, keep them far apart. They will jump four or five inches and slam together because their magnetism is that strong. I've already put one in this corner here. I did it just like I did this one, just slip my finger in there. It's the same process. This one, I was gonna have problems with, but I realized that if I get underneath here and push up, that comes out. And so I can put this one on my finger. All right, so I'm gonna use this one. It's got a little bit more putty on it. And there's a brace right there. It goes right across here. And so I have to be, I'm gonna to have to either put it here or over here, I guess I'm going to try out here because I'd rather be away from the strings a little bit. So I'll just put that right on there. And if I'm lucky, it won't fall off. There, just like that. And reach in there. It should be right there. You can see the magnet sticking right to it. It's about three-eighths of an inch away from this brace and about three-eighths of an inch away from the uh, supports underneath here and I hope that'll be enough if not I can probably pop this off again and move it uh, that putty does stick pretty well and it can be a bit of a challenge to get it loose I've tried to move them once before I'm going to do one over here and that one is going to be on the underside of the cover plate what I'm looking for here is a flat spot so that the um, so that the pickup will sit flush on the surface and not sit on a curve too much. So I'm going to try to put it right there. And we'll see how that works. Sticks right to it. It's just nice and flat. It's out of the way. Shouldn't hit it with my hand. So that all should be good. So with all that, I guess I've got one here, I've got one here, I've got one here, and I've got one here. So that's four. So now I'm going to uh, put it all back together again, which I won't bore you with all of that, other than just to show you the process of setting the cone back in place. And this is a beard cone. It's a little bit larger than the one that came out of here originally. So it's a little bit of a tight fit. But to make sure it lines up, I basically just line up the spots on the neck to make sure that the center of this part of the spider is lined up with it and that means everything should be square and then after that set the cover plate back in place lining up the screws with the holes and then I screw all that down and then thread the strings back in and put them back on so I will put all that back together again then we'll be back in a minute Hi there, I'm back. The, um, everything's put back together again. The strings are on. Um, what you're going to hear is coming straight from the computer. I'm, I've got this run straight through an audio interface into the computer so that we don't have to deal with what amp, what speakers, what microphone, that kind of thing. Everything is set on five. There's no reverb. There's no effects or anything like that working. So it's as clean and straight as I can get it. Um, with that, just run through some of the uh, some of the sounds. So here we're starting with the microphone or the pickup rather on the cover plate itself, which will definitely be the tiniest, most metallic sounding of all of them. So we'll just run through some stuff here. here. There we go.
And the next one, here in the middle, in the waist. And last. There we go. Okay. Well, that was interesting. The computer recording, though it was pretty unforgiving, did do a good job of pointing out the sound differences, the tonal differences between the different locations on the guitar, almost as if you had four instruments in one, which is kind of an interesting idea because then you can consider using the different locations depending on the kind of song that you're playing, the kind of music you play, the kind of amplification you're using. There might be advantages of using one over the other. Another thing I should point out just as a reminder, Doing this, putting the pickup on, makes no difference to the guitar at all. The magnets stay inside, of course, but they don't have any effect on the guitar. And the surface underneath here is a non-marking surface, so it won't damage the, the finish on the instrument at all. Um, the other thing that you probably noticed on the recording was the string noise and the bar noise. But when you're playing through an amplifier, you can usually control that to a pretty large degree. The high notes and mid-tones, you probably want to turn down a little bit. Also, it's recommended to play through a acoustic guitar amplifier, not a electric guitar amplifier. These do a better job of handling acoustic guitar kinds of sounds. Um, I think that's pretty much it. If, uh, if you have any questions, you can contact the Klingon people. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. But I uh, hope you got something out of this. I enjoyed talking to you. We'll see you again.